Easy, hello and welcome back. I'm Scepter. Today we're going to be looking at FM or Serum kick drums, synthesized kick drums. Um, so to kind of crack on and get straight into it, here's one I've made previously. So to break it down for you, the main thing uh, when making synthesized bass kick drums is to think about what makes a kick drum sound like a kick drum so to split it into parts or i will split it into parts you've got the beta hitting the actual drum which gives you a little click and then uh the tone of the drum which starts actually higher in pitch if you imagine like the skin bending forward uh, and then it drops down uh, very quickly as the air travels through the drum and then hits the outer skin and then out to your ears. So working on that basis, if we want to try and recreate that movement in the actual sound itself, the way I always do it is to use a envelope on the pitch of an oscillator and that's going to be moving very quickly. So just in the basic shapes, we've got a sine wave, um, I think it's dB, sine wave uh, and then the first if I turn this off doo -doo. the first thing to do is get uh, your envelope to and assign it to the course pitch now you don't necessarily have to tune it down to octaves it's just um, I've got a very short keyboard so it's easier to do that um, and then we want to modulate the pitch going from high to low so that will give you if I turn that off as well sorry I just turn the effects off now if we pitch it up it's easier to hear what's actually happening so it's that pitch drop that you want now in the higher frequencies it's very obvious but when you get a bit lower So just drag and drop your envelope. Sorry, I've used envelope too. So nice and short, so it's very quick, the pitch drop. And then for your actual amp envelope, which is automatically envelope one, we're gonna want that very short as well. Now you can see already you've got something that resembles kick drum. Now we don't really want that uh, that obvious a pitch drop. We do want it to be happening that quickly, so we just shorten the um, what have I done on decay time, so it does become just a click. Nice. And then in Serum, you've got this noise um, oscillator, which inside it, you've got kick attacks, which is awesome because it makes our life a lot easier in rep rep uh, sorry replicating the transient, which would be the beat hitting the drum. So that's cool as well. Doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, and then lastly, we just put envelope three on the filter using a, a low pass filter um, and then just have it moving ever so slightly. Um, but it's actually opening up. So what it's doing is it's cutting off the high pitch part of the kick drop, sorry, the pitch drop where um, this noise or the attack is now taking the space. And then just opening it up so it's given the chance for the low end or what would be uh, the sustain of the kick to come through. Um, and that's kind of it in Serum really. And I find that the more basic the patch itself 
the more freedom you have for um, affecting it afterwards. So I always use erosion. Uh, if you don't have erosion, like I've said before, do choose a little snippet of a white noise sample um, just to add a bit of grit um, in drum and bass. You know, it's what we're always kind of looking for. So that sounds like this. So it just makes it sound like we might have sampled it. Um, then after that, I've used a little bit of overdrive. And what that's doing is it's just adding extra harmonics um, in the high mids. So it's adding tonality to something that is quite digital already. Now I've got the tone on max, but everything else is just on 50-50. And then depending on where you put this little band pass, um, where it focuses the distortion, will change what tone you get. Now I wanted it just to add it um, so it almost makes it sound a little bit woody is kind of what I was aiming for. And then after that I've just got a bit of EQ and you can actually see the pitch drop happening. And it's just bring out a bit of the low mids and then the click at the top. And then lastly uh, a Pro L really to bring up the volume um, and then the nice thing about this as well is not only can you change the pitch of your kick but depending on how long the note is it will change the, the length of your kick as well so that can be quite nice. Now in drum bass, because it's quite fast, we're gonna want a pretty short kick, but it can be cool for making uh, kick effects and stuff like that. Um, and do bear in mind, if you change the root key of where your kick's being played, you might have to alter your EQ a little bit. Um, it's worth talking about the settings on the Pro L as well. Um, now it's a bit more difficult to do with the Ableton compressor, but, uh, sorry, Ableton limiter, because you don't have um, attack and release uh, options. So I've got a look ahead, um, which means it sees the signal coming in, uh, and then I've got the look ahead on quite quite far, so it's giving. It is giving it a chance to see what's coming. So you've got it on zero, and then you've got the attack on um, at something late, then quite often it will still cut the initial transient off, um, but you'll find that you have different amounts of control depending on how much look ahead you have. So I've got quite a bit of look ahead, and I've got the attack really slow because I do want it to cut that initial transient off and um, to give that limited and squashed sound. And then the release I've got 500 milliseconds pretty standard for for drums I find uh, it's enough to just limit it but at the same time the uh, the limiter will go back to being kind of reset if you like by the time the next kick comes transients I've got on 100% li linked now in this there shouldn't be any uh, stereo difference between the transients there will be a little bit from the noise but it's just noise it's not really changing anything uh, and then quite a bit of gain. So there is you know, 8 dB of gain reduction. That is quite a lot. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it really. It's, it's a simple one, but you can spend a lot of time kind of messing around and building up something that you're not really happy with or you can't see where you might be going wrong with it. So hopefully this does help. Uh, it definitely helped um, me. W w I watched a, another video on how people were making them quite a while ago and it really helped me get where I wanted to be with it um, because what I was doing was taking the same approach each time and wondering why I was getting the same outcome, as silly as that sounds. But um, sometimes it just takes looking at someone else's and going, oh, actually, yeah, I realise what I'm doing wrong now. 
Um, and I would apply the same principle with a snare drum, really try and think of what it is that builds up what a snare drum sounds like. So you'd have the same with the pitch drop, uh, the transient, and then noise definitely to replicate the actual snares on, on the drum themselves. Um, cool, so hopefully that's helpful to a few heads out there. Please do like and subscribe. If you have any questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching. Peace.